They discovered a God who was delivering the captives, bringing sight to the blind, a savior who was preaching good news to the oppressed. Um, they discovered some of the more radical literature where the whole emphasis upon freedom and the truth will set you free. But I would also question any suggestion that this was purely and other, had otherworldly connotation. That is, um, when, when you're in a condition of bondage, any religion that you profess has to have this world meaning and consequence. So I may use otherworldly, transcendent, and even eschatological images, but really what I'm doing is usurping the power of this present reality to place a limitation on my possibility. Even dreaming becomes an act of freedom. And not only as this me, this is not my personal revolution. It is not my political decision. This is my conformance to the character and the design of God. I must not, I am not, uh, I am not required by my faith nor by my design to stay in a condition that negates my person, my promise, and my possibility. So uh, when you, you begin to see this, Christianity began to take on other means. And one of the ways that I, it's sometimes difficult for people to see this is because when we, you know, you see all these books around here. When we think of theology, we think they didn't. Where are their books? They didn't write books. But guess what they did? They told folk tales. <laughs> Come on. They, they had prayers. They had uh, uh, jokes. And so in their joke, they would teach you about an alternative worldview. And it was a way of communicating with you about an alternative belief system in a fashion that would not engender your ire, but might even cause you to laugh until you walked away and realized, what did they just say? Can I, get, can I give, you, give you an example? Absolutely. Like, you know, you'll read, I, I have it right here in a book that talks about swapping dreams. And in swapping dreams, there's a slave master with a slave named Josh. But every morning they would get up and sw tell each other what they dreamed last night. And so the master gets up and said, Josh, I went to Negro heaven last night. And I went to this, the Negro heaven and y'all Negroes was everywhere. Oh, there was niggers all over the place and you was playing your banjos and just dancing and stirring up dust and some of you was spitting your watermelon seeds. Y'all were niggers everywhere and you were having a wonderful time. Josh said, Master, you must have ate the same thing I ate. I dreamed I died last night and went to Master Heaven. And Master, the streets was paved with gold. The gates were pearly. Massa, it was the most beautifulest place I ever been done seen. But you know what, Massa? There wasn't a soul in the place. And they, everybody laughs. But what he just told you is that my theological framework is not your theological framework. And I don't envision a future, nor do I interpret the reality in this way.